Right before we jump into this video, if you would like to take better pictures in only 11 days, well, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. And in this video, I wanna help you understand the math of photography. I wanna show you how you build an exposure using shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, basically from taking an image that's already done, looking at the exposure, and then figuring out how it could have been different if we were using, say, a kit lens, a 5.6, or if we wanted to just let more light in versus not let more light in. That's what I'm here to help you figure out. So let's jump into this first image. Right here we have a hockey player. I took this a long time ago because it was done with the Nikon D3100. The exposure is 1 2 50th of a second at 2.8, 1600 ISO. So 1600 ISO on a camera like this back in the day was pretty much the max the ISO would go and it still works and it's still clean. But it's a little slow for my taste in terms of shutter speed. It's a little low. And in today's cameras, 1600 is nothing. 3200 is almost nothing. Just about every basic, even beginner camera today can handle 6400 ISO without a problem. Now I am using a 70 to 200 2.8 because if you are shooting indoors, shooting sports, you're really not gonna get away too often with a 5.6 aperture lens. It's just the nature of the beast. You could pick up something like a Tamron 70 to 200 2.8 G2 for about 12 or 1300 bucks is a solid 2.8 lens to kind of start with in your bag. So what I wanna do here is I wanna build this exposure to get to one 1,000th one of a second. So currently, we're at one 250th of a second. So how do we get to one 1,000th one and how many stops is that? All right, here's the math part. Let's double the stop. So here we go, we're gonna double the shutter speed to one 500th of a second. That's one stop of light. And then guess what? Double it again to get you to one one thousandth of a second, and we just got two stops of light. All right, we made, we actually, we didn't get two stops of light. We cut down on the amount of light that's coming in because as your shutter speed goes up, your exposure basically, it, the shutter doesn't stay open as long. Two fiftieth of a second is a longer shutter speed. One one thousandth of a second is much faster. So the light doesn't get let in as much. So if we were to go up two stops right now, we'll go two stops. Boom. Oh, I went the wrong way. Negative two stops. So we go negative two stops. Look at it. That's how dark it is. But now we need to find, we need to make up for those two stops of light. Now we can't let in more light from the 2.8. We can't drop the aperture to anything lower because 2.8 is the slowest. So where do we get two stops of light from? Well, ISO. In most of today's cameras, you'll be fine with this. So let's see, one stop of light, same thing as shutter speed, we double it, 3200 ISO. Double it again, 64. 100 ISO. There are your two stops of light. So now we can zero this back out because at one one thousandth of a second at f 2.8 at 6400 ISO we're going to end up with the same exposure and the noise and grain are probably going to look the same as they did in this D3100 in most of today's modern cameras. But what do you do if you don't want to shoot at 6400 because you think it's too much? Well, let's go back to 3200. So we have 3200 ISO. We're at one one thousand, what was that? One one thousandth of a second. We took away one stop, right? We took away a stop of light by going from 6400 to 3200. Let's take away one stop of light from shutter speed and we're at one five hundredth of a second at 2.8, 3200 ISO, which is perfectly fine for freezing most action. So this is the math of photography. I know it may seem complicated in your mind sometimes, but when you start drawing it out on this iPad in this case, it makes sense. Just this is the math that goes on in my head all day long, everywhere. Even if I'm not shooting, I see the light and I'm like, okay, well, the exposure would be this, but what if I wanna do this? Let's check out the next thing. So we're gonna move on to the next image. 
The next image right here is a soccer player outside. Again, taken with a Rebel Canon Rebel T2i, a very basic DSLR. We're at 1 2500th of a second at 5.6 at ISO 400. Now the goal here is to go from 5.6 to 2.8. Basically what we're doing is saying that we're gonna use a 2.8 outside. Maybe it's a 70 to 200, 2.8. Most likely it's one of those Tamron lenses, 70 to 200, 2 or maybe you have the Canon, maybe you have the Nikon native glass or Sony native glass. So we want to get to 2.8. So right now we're at 1 2500th of a second, 5, 6, 400 ISO. How do we get stops from aperture? The same way that we did from shutter speed and ISO. 5.6 goes to F4. That's one stop. And the next stop to 2.8 is another stop to 2.8. So that's two stops of light. We just went from 5.6, which doesn't let in as much light, to f4, which lets in a little more light, to 2.8, which lets in a lot more light. So what is the representation here? This is where we go up two stops uh, in exposure. That's what this image would look like if we went to 2.8 right now and changed nothing. It's too bright. So what do we need to do? We need to cut down on the amount of light being let into the camera. How do we do that? Remember the slower shutter speed? Let's in a lot of light, faster shutter speed, boom, it's quicker. So not as much light can come in there. So what can we do here to cut down on the amount of light? We could raise the shutter speed more, but in this camera it tops out at 1 4,000th of a second. So I don't want to take it there because 1 2500th is perfectly fine. So ISO. We go another stop of light, 200, and one more stop of light, 100, and we just picked up those two stops of light in terms of we cut down, we picked up two stops, we traded. Think of it as a trade. It's all a trade-off. If we take two stops from one, we need to find two stops from somewhere else. The recommendation always with photography is don't try to change 27 settings while you're trying to figure out what your exposure should be. Change one at a time, cause and effect, build the exposure, three shots or less. I guarantee you that I can get the right exposure in any situation in three shots or less to get it right. And I know that you guys can figure this out too. So we just got two stops of light. You know what I'm saying, between two stops. So let's go back to zero because we just found two stops that puts us back there. We dropped the ISO to 100. Just about every camera today can shoot at 100 ISO. We did it. Boom. Pretty easy to cut back on that. So just remember, stops. 100 ISO, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, 12,800, you double it. So each one of these is a stop. Boom, that's a stop of light. Shutter speed, you've got like, let's go with uh, 1 100th, 1 200th, 1 400th, 1 800th, 1 1600, 1 3200, and everywhere in between as well. Uh, aperture, okay, 2.8 to four, to 5.6, to eight, to 11, to 16, to 22, and some lenses go beyond that. That is the building blocks and fundamentals of photography right there in a nutshell. I should probably be selling this video, but whatever. Do you shoot RAW and do you also use Lightroom, which is probably what you should be using to edit your RAW files, but you're looking for a better starting point with your files? Well, we created 14 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash presets. On that page, you can play with the befores and afters to see how our presets could help you out. And if you go ahead and pick them up right now, they are on sale for 40% off. So they're gonna give you a great starting point as well as cut back on the amount of time that you're spending editing your RAW files. Let's move on to the next picture. I got two more to talk about right here. So this one is done at 1 1,000th of a second at 2.8 at 3200 ISO, which froze this gymnast in midair. I was at a distance at 102 millimeters with a 70 to 200 2.8 with the Nikon D3500. But I want to tell you that you can do this with a kit lens. Bear with me. We're going to get this with a kit lens at 5.6. So. 5.6 is the goal. We want to get to 5.6 and build the exposure 
so we can freeze her. You can freeze her at the peak action where she's jumping right now with anything. So let's build it out. 2.8 to four, one stop, four to five, another stop. So that is two stops that we're cutting down. I don't know why I put 2.0, but two stops of light that we're cutting back on. So again, we're gonna go negative two because now it's super dark because we're not letting in as much light. 2.8, four, 5.6. As you go, you're not letting in as much light. That's how the aperture, it's like your eye. Think of the iris. So here we go. Where are we gonna find two stops of light? Two stops to make it brighter. Okay, we could go, we could go up to 6,400. That's one stop. Okay, we got one stop back. Oh, wrong way. Let's go negative one. So we got, went to 6,400 because most cameras can handle it. We can then, ooh, why I just hit the X, I must have hit undo. So we 6,400, so we got one stop there. We're letting it, it's brighter, so boom. Now I need to let in another, more light. We need to let in more light to compensate for the light that we took away with the aperture. Guess what we're gonna do? One stop right there. So now at 1 500th of a second, at f5.6 at 6400 ISO with a 70 to 300 kit lens at 100 millimeters, you're still going to be capable of getting this shot. It may be a little noisy and grainy in some situations with depending on the camera, but what do we do if we want to stay at 3200? So let's erase some stuff here. Get out my eraser. Let's take it back. Take it back. Take it back to 3200. We're going to zero. We're going to go back to negative 2. Boom. So we're back there. Two stops of light. We're going to take it right from the shutter speed. We're going to gain it. One, oop, I'm still in eraser mode. One five hundredth to one two fiftieth of a second. At 5.6, at 3200 ISO, you will still get the same exposure as I did right here. And at peak action, where she's at the top of her jump, she's basically frozen in time. So if you shoot it at peak action, you're gonna freeze it at a slower shutter speed than if, you, than if she wasn't. If she was on her way down or on her way up, you may get some blur. But at 1 250th of a second, at 5.6, at 3200, you can make this happen. Building blocks, you see how this is working? That's why before this video started, I asked you to sign up for the 11 Days to Better Photography mini video course at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. That's right, those are 11 free videos that are gonna build on what I'm talking about to help you for free become a better photographer. And I got one more image right here to work with. Let's go to page four, and we're at 1 1250th of a second at 2.8 at 3200. Now again, I want us to capture this image with a 70 to 300 5.6. That's what I want us to capture this image at. That's why I wrote down 5.6 here. That's our goal to get there. So we go to F4 like we did earlier. That's one stop and this is two stops. So again, we're at two stops of light. So we took away. Let's go to negative two. It's dark because we cut back again. Now we need to get more. We could raise the ISO, but she's not moving. She's standing still. Okay, so let's have this. We've got one 640th is pretty darn close. That's one 640th and then one 320th. So if your camera, if you're not seeing these settings, some of your cameras may not be able to do third stop increments, but or it may be something that you need to set up on the back end inside of your menu system to allow you to do thirds of a stop. So instead of just one stop at a time, like look through your camera, it will show you 200, 400, 800, it will show you the stops. It's real easy once, once it gets into your mind. And I know not many people really explain it this way, but I'm very Mr. Rogers about it. I like to show you, draw it out because you will see it and then you will, it will resonate in your mind. That, I wish somebody taught me like that back in the day. So we're at 1 3 20th of a second, 5.6, 3200 ISO. Let's say we want to slow, get low, less ISO. So 3200 is going to be 1600 if we go down one stop. Now, what do I need to do? Because I am now letting in, I'm not gaining as much light at 1600 as I was at 3200. What do I need to do? Let more light in. I could go to F4 
to gain that one stop because that's going to compensate for the loss of light. Or if I leave that at 5.6 because I can't open up anymore because the lens is at 5.6, I can now go from 1 320th down to 1 60th of a second. And she's not moving. And then I would basically would have, oop, don't want to do that. <laughs> I would basically have the same exposure as where I started. So these are the fundamentals and building blocks of photography. If you like this, please thumbs this up. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave some comments down below if this helped you out. If, if you want to see more of these types of videos where I'm just breaking down the exposures, I know it becomes repetitive, but isn't it interesting that after two images, you're kind of just seeing how the math works in multiple different situations. This is an indoor situation where the lighting isn't great. You can do it with kit lenses. I shot outside with a 70 to 300. So I'm just showing you how you can build the exposure. The fundamentals of photography is where it's at. Once you understand this, you are free to capture anything you want. This is the math of photography. Shutter speed, aperture, ISO. Draw down your settings too. Sit there with your pictures after the fact and draw them out. Figure out what the exposure could have been if you messed up. Don't be afraid to get out of auto, all right? So that's where I'm gonna leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Polin, Photo.com. See ya.